take a look now at an alternative to tariffs as a way to reduce the amount of imports that come into a, a market. So a tariff is a direct way to limit the imports by raising the price of a good. A quantitative restriction instead just limits the quantity of the goods that come into the market. It could be as a share of the, the total market in the economy or just a simple quantity uh, per uh, given year. So one of the advantages from a government standpoint of a, a quota or a quantitative restriction as opposed to a tariff is that it provides more certainty. When you limit the quantity that can come in, you know exactly how much is going to be able to come into the country, barring smuggling. A tariff, on the other hand, if foreigners or importers pay the tax at the border, they can bring the product in. So you really don't know with certainty what the, uh, the number of goods that will come into the market, and so don't know what the pressure will be on your uh, domestic um, uh, producers. So in this video, we're going to be examining a number of aspects of quantitative restrictions. One is to look at the effects of these measures on domestic prices, at domestic production, and ultimately on uh, domestic consumers. We're going to see that the, there's going to be an important role for the allocation of licenses. Basically, that is a piece of paper that allows someone to bring a product into the market. If you, if you have a physical quantity that's allowed in, you have to, the government needs to keep track of that, and when it reaches the limit, the border shuts down. And so the way that this is done is often through the allocation of a license at the, at the border. And another important aspect that's going to be associated with these licenses is a concept called quota rent, which we will introduce in, in just a, a few moments. So let's start out with a, a basic supply and demand curve for an import competing industry. We have the red line, which is the free trade supply price. We're going to be looking at a small country case. The world will supply as much of this product as this importing country would want at $100. So that's the world price is $100. Q2 is demanded, Q1 is supplied domestically, and the difference, of course, is imported. So with a quota, there will be a limit to the amount that can be brought in. And let's assume that this quota, this quantitative restriction, is less than the original amount of imports. So at the original domestic price, there is too much demand relative to the supply that's brought from domestic and foreign uh, producers. In particular, there's excess domestic demand at the free trade price. So when there's more demand than there is supply, the price has to rise. The price is going to rise domestically until the point where the, the foreign supply plus the domestic production equals the demand inside this market. So that for this particular quota, that would be a price such as PQ, 110. So in this instance, we've got uh, the domestic production is now at Q3, domestic consumption is Q4, and the difference that's imported is what is allowed by the government to come in. So what we see is that the quota raises the price inside the domestic market. So let's take a look at the impact on the various groups within the domestic economy. Producers, domestic producers are going to gain A. That's the increase in producer surplus associated with the higher price. It's the difference in the price over the supply curve. Domestic consumers are going to face a loss of consumer surplus equal to A, B, C, D. That is the difference in the price over to the demand curve. And then we have a question about how the government is affected by this. For the tariff, they had, they had government revenue directly through the import tax. The impact on the government in this instance is going to be unclear because it depends on how the licenses are allocated for the imports uh, that come in. So let's, we look at the 
the welfare effects, we've got gains and losses outweighing each other on the domestic consumer and producer side. The producers gain at the expense of the uh, domestic consumers. And we have this net effect of BD, which are the standard deadweight losses, very similar, in fact, exactly the same as with tariff. And then C, this is a loss to domestic consumers. It's not clear whether the government is going to earn this in terms of, of revenue, which is what we'll explore now. Now, an important part of this story is what's called a quota rent. Now, a quota rent is the difference between what foreigners were willing to bring this product into the market and what they're allowed to get if they're able to sell within this protected domestic market. Now, if a foreigner gets a license, gets to sell inside the domestic market, they sell it for $110. If they sell this same product anywhere else in the world, it's $100. The difference between those two is the quota rent. The foreigner would be willing to pay up to $10 in order to get access to this protected domestic market. Now, they would clearly prefer to pay nothing so that they can just pocket the extra profits associated with the protected market but the government potentially can gain some revenue by charging foreigners for the right to sell inside the domestic market. So the, the net welfare effect is going to depend very much on how these quota licenses are allocated by the government. So let's say, for example, that the government auctions the quotas to foreign suppliers. They say you are w more than welcome to sell inside our market, but we're going to make you pay. Now, if there are lots of foreign producers that are competing to get access to this domestic market, then they would be willing to pay up to that area C in the previous graph. If that is, if that happens, there's going to be essentially the same revenue that the government would have earned with a tariff that is instead earned through the quota licenses sold competitively through an, an auction process. The government could also simply give away the licenses, give away the pieces of paper to, the, to foreigners who are interested in buying or are selling this product inside the domestic market. If the licenses are given away to foreigners, then the net welfare effect is B and D, the debt, standard debt weight losses, plus a transfer of C from domestic consumers, in effect, to the foreign producers. They get these higher profits associated with the protected market. Now, there's also a a, a very real possibility of corruption in the allocations of licenses. Quotas are more frequently used in the developing world. They're banned more or less in manufactured goods in the, um, in the developed world through WTO agreements. And so if, let's say that the licenses are sold on Thursday, but a person that controls the licensing process, say a bureaucrat, can meet with somebody on Monday, sell the license, pocket the money. Now, in that instance, the national welfare effects are a bit ambiguous. In the standard analysis that we've been doing, a transfer between a domestic, between two domestic agents has no net welfare effects. So through corruption, you would essentially have a transfer from domestic consumers who would pay higher prices, who would then be essentially paying indirectly to the corrupt bureaucrats. Now, this is an example where you clearly wouldn't want to think of those as being welfare neutral. There are all sorts of problems with 
a, a system that encourages uh, corruption among um, government administrators. But nonetheless, if we do the analysis as we have been uh, pursuing so far, the net welfare loss of corruption would, would only be B and D because the C would be a transfer from, from consumers to the, to the, um, to the bureaucrats.